and now for something completely the same. Hello and welcome to another VHS review. In today's tape, I tape myself in Adelaide back on the 13th of February 2000. It's Luc Besson's 1997 sci-fi masterpiece, The Fifth Element, which I unfortunately partially taped over a couple of years later with Austin Powers. But we're really only interested in the ads anyway, like this Channel 10 promo that was accidentally broadcast in the wrong aspect ratio. 7.30 Thursday, Amanda Keller takes you on a gender-bending mind trip beep, beep. as a truckie swaps places with a drag queen and from Britain to the bush. What in heavens am I doing out here? See what happens when a celebrity chef faces her toughest audience. This is a challenge, I promise you. The all-new Switching Lives, then at 8. A brand new viewing experience. That sounded like Anderson. Brady Anderson at the wall. You'll see it all on Unreal TV, following Switching Lives, Thursday on 10. Whoops. Not sure how that could have happened. Widescreen digital TV was still a year away. Maybe they were doing some early experiments. I've already tediously covered aspect ratios two episodes ago, so let's move on. Can Hyundai I? Landra. Great. Wonderful. Big 1.8 litre twin cam. There's a... No, no, don't tell me. Remote central locking, aircon, CD player. Mister, you talked me into it. At 19990 drive away, the feature-packed Hyundai Lantra sells itself. Then why are they bothering with the commercial? Remember when online stores were new and people just assumed they were scams instead of simply trusting everyone on the internet unquestioningly like we all do now? Hmm. But back in 2000, we needed ads like this. Ah! Yes, Mrs. McLaughlin at French's Forest. The people at D-Store are real and they know their stuff. This is one of the people who reviews all the products, aren't you? <laughs> and this is the warehouse where everything is packed. D-Store is a flesh and blood operation, swarming with real people, with real feelings. See you, Baldy! Want an online department store you can rely on? D-Store knows. dstore.com.au I'm sure it still beats working for Amazon. I don't know about you, but I could kill for a drink. <laughs> Yeah, mix it up a bit. Why not give murder a try? Murder responsibly. Now, you're probably thinking, surely that ad got a few complaints. Well, you're not wrong. But what was the outcome? Let's find out in a brand new segment called... Get this off the air! The Advertising Standards Bureau, case number 70 slash 00, 14th of March 2000, United Distillers and Vintners Limited. The description. The television commercial commences with the superimposed words El Magnificento 7 and a scene of seven men of unsavory bandit style appearance on horseback. The camera pans along the line of men as they pass down a pack of cans of UDL pre-mixed drinks, each man taking a can in turn. The camera shows the final man who, unlike the others, is of clean-cut appearance. He then appears to get shot by one of the other men, falling from his horse as the others begin laughing and drinking from their cans. Voiceover says, GDL, now available in a six pack. The complaints. These adverts are reinforcing in the minds of those in our community who are easily influenced that it is quite comical and acceptable to bully and vent your hatred on those who are different. The range of feeling conveyed to me vary from offensive to absolutely tasteless, with all agreeing that the advertisement is unnecessarily violent. Is this the message society needs? Life is cheap and hurting or killing someone is okay and even funny? So what was the verdict? Yep, the board determined the advertisement did not breach the code and would not offend prevailing community standards. It was noted that the actions of the men were clearly being presented in a fictitious context as a parody of the spaghetti western movie genre. 
The board accordingly dismissed the complaint. So, no worries then. There's one thing in particular that would have made this ad for Force Electronics look a bit out of date in the year 2000. See if you can pick it. TV repairs. Kiss your money goodbye just on the call out fee. Or give them the kiss off and bring it to Force. No repair, no charge, no worries. Force Electronics, there's one near you. If you said that flashing super, you'd be wrong. Those are timeless. No, it's the old paper $20 notes, which were phased out when the new Polymer 20 was introduced in 1994. Six years later, and this ad is still on the air, well past its shelf life. Some ads can get away with it, like those classic VB commercials voiced by John Millian. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer, and the best cold beer is Vic. Who, despite dying in 1989, a notoriously bad career move, still had his iconic voice advertising long cold Vicks well into the 2000s, after his family gave the beer company their blessing. You can get it any old how. While we're on the subject of zombie ads pushing it past their use-by date, here's another example from my own recollection. Back in 2013, I'd just hooked up the TV in my new apartment in Hawthorne, and I saw this ad for Auntie Kath's cookie dough. Dad, is there anything to eat? Oh, I'll see. With Auntie Kath's ready-to-bake cookie dough, it's easy to perform brilliantly in the kitchen. Two scrumptious flavours by Auntie Kath. Mm. That ad was at least 15 years old. I remember watching it as a kid back in the 90s. For starters, it was in 4x3, which was pretty unusual in 2013. And take a closer look at that video game the kids are playing. That's Super Mario Kart, released in 1992. In 2013, the Super Nintendo had been superseded by the Nintendo 64, GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. Guess it was cheaper for Auntie Kath to pay those actors residuals rather than shoot a whole new ad. Nice surprise for them. And on that note, I'll leave you with this sadly pretty timeless 10 News report from a young Samantha Maiden. Look out for a couple of other familiar faces. Goodbye. Plans to send boat people to work as fruit pickers have drawn an outraged response from unions. The Howard government says it's considering a proposal to make illegals pay their way before being sent home. Bound with rope and under arrest, this is the fate of illegals captured in an immigration raid at a tomato farm last year. But now the government is considering a plan to put detainees to work legally that the money that is paid to them is used to recoup the cost to the Commonwealth um, of detention and supervision. The government admits the costs may well outweigh the benefits. Labor warning it has serious security concerns. What are you going to have? You're going to put them in ball and chain? Are you going to have police there making sure that they don't escape? But fruit growers say it's one way to meet a chronic labor shortage. Absolutely they'll be paid. This is not exploitation. This is, this is not like sort of, you know, marching um, prisoners, political prisoners, if you like, off at gunpoint and making them work on a roadside chain gang. It's nothing along those lines. And Labor says it could also send the wrong message to people smugglers that the federal government is prepared to give detainees a job. Pay fair wages and Australians will pick fruit. Don't pay fair wages and let the fruit rot. Samantha Maiden, 10 News. We've got the AFL Live microphone right at the foot of this bounce as the umpire goes in and goes. Thank you very much. Oh, boing you back there, David. 